Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome back to the Concurrency in Go course. Now for those of you who are new to this channel, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. And of course, make sure to check out this video right here where we started to talk about concurrency, what is concurrency and all that stuff. And of course, during any time of this video, feel comfortable to hit that like button and share this video if you find any value. Like in the previous video, at the end of each video, I'm gonna provide you with a zip archive so you don't have to write all the code by hand, so you can just download that. That's why I head over to that GitHub repository and download the zip archive so that you don't have to write everything by hand so that you can follow along as we progress in this video. So because this specific topic got way out of hand, I decided to split this in three parts where I'm gonna cover weight groups in so many details. So in part number one, in this video, you'll learn pretty much everything basic about weight groups, how to use a weight group, how to create a weight group, couple of weight group issues, and so much more. We'll dive into so many examples. When it comes to concurrency, you really have two options. You have to either use concurrency primitives or channels. This is why don't worry too much about one or the other. For now, let's go ahead and focus on concurrency primitives, specifically weight groups. So the simplest question you may ask is what exactly is a weight group and why is it called a weight group? So the approach is very simple. You will have some kind of weight point at some point in your program and you will also have to tell each and individual concurrent process go routine that this action is done. It's as simple as that. This is a weight group in a nutshell. Now let's dive into more details about weight groups. So as a lot of you know, the weight group type is part of the sync package. Now part of the sync package, there are also other types. So we have weight group, then we have mutex, read write mutex, locker, cond, map, and pull. However, we're gonna leave the rest of the types inside the sync package and we're gonna focus specifically on weight groups. There are a couple of problems when it comes to concurrent code, the way it executes. And one of these problems is waiting for a condition. Let's say you have a couple of concurrent actions, functions, processes, call them however you want. Let's say you have to execute those functions, those go routines first before you execute anything else, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. So we have a starting point where all these actions have to be executed and then we have a wait point and after that wait point we execute things as we wish. This is why it's called wait groups because we need to wait for something to happen before we actually continue or proceed. And now all that being said let's have a look at an example which demonstrates that. And before we even go ahead and use wait groups in the first example let's see if we can achieve this task without using wait groups. Let's create a new directory called without wait group and inside this directory let's create a file called main and package main func main as usual. So I'm gonna create a function called work. So let's say func work. So let's say time.sleep. Let's say 100 time millisecond. ID is going to be an integer. And at the end of this uh, time sleep, let's say font print line. Let's say a task. Let's pass in the ID and let's say is done. And then inside the main function, let's go ahead and run 10 of these go routines. So inside the main function, I'm gonna say for, let's say i is gonna start from zero, i less than 10, i plus plus, and let's say go work. And let's pass in i plus one. So let's say something like time.sleep, let's say time.second, and let's say from to print line, main is done. So let's say we run this example. And as you can see, all of these tasks have executed, it printed main is done. However, it kind of waited a little bit too long. So let's run this again. As you can see, it waits and then it prints main is done. So you may ask yourself, what if we can wait a little bit less so that we give uh, the go routines enough time to execute, but not too much time. Otherwise we're gonna sleep for too long. So if instead of one second, you go ahead and say 100, uh, time millisecond and you try and execute this example again as you can see sometimes it prints two of them other times it prints most of them so as you can see we do have a problem and we need weight groups in order to solve it so let's create another example in order to play with weight groups and then after that we come back to this example and fix it using weight groups so inside our directory I'm gonna create another directory called uh, basic where we're gonna play with weight groups so let's create a file called main 
as usual main funk main so it's very easy and simple to use weight groups first of all you have to create a weight group then you have to call the method add in order to indicate how many operations or go routines you want to wait for and then after that you're gonna run your go routines and inside each go routine you want to call the method done once you called all your go routines you have to call the method wait in order to wait for those go routines to execute and call their done method so first of all as we said we need a weight group so let's say var weight group is going to be sync dot weight group let's say we want to run free go routines and thus we're going to call weight group add free so let's say weight group add free so let's say go funk and i'm going to copy and paste in order to not uh, confuse ourselves, in order to not forget about it, I'm just going to use a defer statement. So I'm gonna say defer, let's say weight group dot done, copy this and paste it right here and paste it right there. All we have to do is call the method wait. So let's go ahead and say something like this, weight group dot wait. And uh, this call right here will block until each and every one of these go routines have called their done method. So to make a distinction between all these go routines, let's simply print something like one, two and three. So let's say something like this, font print line, let's say one, copy this, paste and paste and replace this with two, replace this with three. First of all, after you created the weight group, you have to synchronize this add call with the weight call, which means it has to be on the same layer. It doesn't have to be inside of these go routines. Switch this defer statement. Let's make sure the defer statement is first so that no matter what happens inside our go routine, done will always get called. So I'm going to run this example. And as you can see, it prints and it prints in a pretty random order. So this is pretty much it when it comes to creating and using a weight group. Now let's get back to our initial example and fix that using a weight group. So again, not to waste a lot of time, I'm just going to make use of copy and paste. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it over here and let's call it uh, something like with weight group. So uh, in the work function, the first argument is not going to be ID, is going to be the weight group and keep this thing in mind we're going to pass weight group as a pointer or as a reference not as a value because this is very important as you will see later on so let's say weight group is going to be a pointer to sync dot weight group so let's say weight group uh, done and let's use a defer statement first of all let's create a weight group so let's say var weight group sync weight group and then let's pass this uh, weight group as a pointer so let's say pointer to weight group say weight group dot add let's say 10 instead of uh, time slipping right here let's say weight group dot wait so if we run this example again as you can see, we no longer wait for anything. We don't wait for anything. We don't wait too much. We don't wait too little. Let's actually go ahead and measure the time of execution as we did in the previous examples in the first lesson. So after the call to wait group .add, let's go ahead and create a variable and capture that now time. So I'm gonna make a variable right here. Let's say now is going to be equal to time that now. And before we say main is done, I'm simply going to say something like font print line let's say elapsed time since and let's provide in this variable so as you can see running this multiple times takes roughly 100 milliseconds and that is due to concurrency which we explored in the first lesson all right so now that we have used weight groups we know what weight groups are let's explore a couple of weight groups issues and how to avoid them the first one is not really an issue but if you don't call the method add before you call wait wait will return immediately so let me give you a simple example of that so i'm going to create a directory called no add Add. so let's say directory no add and let's create a file main as usual package main funk main as usual let's create a weight group by using sync weight group so let's say var weight group is going to be sync weight group and now let's go ahead and call the weight method on the weight group and you will see it executes immediately so let's say weight group dot weight and if you run this example as you can see it executed immediately and uh, let's actually make this a little more interesting let's say something like this um, to print line executed immediately and let's uh, actually go ahead and create or run a go routine which is going to sleep for a while and you will see it's not going to wait for that go routine so let's say something like this go funk and let's say defer weight group done let's say time dot uh, sleep for example uh, let's say 300 uh, milliseconds so let's say go routine done so if you run this example as you can see it says executed immediately it doesn't even wait for that go routine this is one of 
of the issues or I shouldn't say it's really an issue because you didn't call add thus you're not waiting for anything so it's pretty much on your responsibility another consequence of not calling done enough times let's say you call done less times than you indicated in the ad when you called ad it's actually going to result in a deadlock and this is also something which is deadly for your application you want to avoid deadlocks at all costs let me show you another example which proves that kind of situation so let's create another directory called deadlock so i'm gonna say directory deadlock and as usual let's create a function inside this file main let's say package main func main and as usual let's create a weight group so let's say var weight group is going to be sync weight group now in order to generate a deadlock all we have to do is call add without calling done so let's say weight group add and let's say we want to wait for one operation and then let's say wait group wait now because we are waiting here and because we are saying we are waiting for one operation and that operation never calls done it's basically going to deadlock let's go ahead and run this example and as you can see it says all go routines are asleep deadlock which means we are waiting on something which never happens now this was the situation when we did not call done enough times if you call done more times than you call add it's going to result in a panic your code is going to panic and this is something which is deadly for your application so without too much talking let me show you an example which is going to prove just that so again i'm going to create a directory let's say directory done too many times and as usual create a file main package main punk main so let's say var weight group is going to be a sync dot weight group and now let's simply call done without calling add so let's simply say weight group done so when you run this example as you can see it will result in a panic saying negative weight group counter now why is it negative weight group counter because when you call done what it actually does it calls add with minus one so if you open up the implementation, as you can see, it says weight group add minus one, which results in a negative counter. Another very important thing you have to remember, you always have to pass a weight group as a reference, which means you always have to pass a weight group as a pointer. So let's go ahead and create another example where we pass the weight group to a function, not as a reference, not as a pointer, but as a value. And you will see we get the exact same panic. So as usual, create another directory, and this one is going to be called pass by value so let's say directory let's call it passed by value and as usual a file called main package main func main so let's say var weight group it's going to be sync weight group and let's say weight group add one and let's run a function in its own go routine so let's say go work and let's pass in the weight group but not pass the weight group as a reference or as a pointer but pass it as a value so i'm going to pass weight group and now let's go ahead and create that work function so let's say func work and let's pass in uh, the argument so let's say weight group is going to be a sync dot weight group and as you can see we have this squiggly lines which says that we are actually passing this weight group as a value not as a pointer so as usual let's say something like defer weight group dot done and let's say something like work is done call the wait method so let's say wait group wait and now let's run this example and you'll see we have the exact same panic so if you run this example we have the exact same panic saying negative wait group counter and that is because we did not pass the wait group as a pointer if you don't pass the wait group as a pointer you will get a panic which is basically going to kill your program right away so this is why try and avoid this try and always always pass the weight group as a reference or as a pointer not as a value now another very tricky issue when it comes to using weight groups is trying to reuse the weight groups while it's still waiting while the wait method has not returned trying to do so will result in a panic as well let's create another example to show you exactly what i mean so i'm going to create a different directory called weight group reuse so let's say something like directory let's say weight group reuse and this one is going to be a simple example so let's create another directory called simple and let's create a file called main and inside this package main as usual func main and let's try and uh, reuse this weight group before the wait method has actually returned like always let's create the weight group and let's call that add method so let's create a weight group by saying var weight group sync weight group and let's call weight group add one now before we call that go routine let's say weight group that wait and let's now run that go routine let's say go 
func. So let's say time dot sleep. And let's say time second. So let's say weight group dot done. And right after we call done, let's go ahead and say weight group that add. So let's say add one. So if you run this example, we're gonna get a panic because uh, when we call done right here, uh, the weight still has to do a couple of processing. As, as you can see, the weight method is pretty long and it still has to do a couple of operation. And immediately after we call done, we call add. Thus, this function has not yet returned, but we call add, thus it will result in a panic. Let's go ahead and run this example and prove you that. And as you can see, it says panic sync weight group is reused before previous weight has returned. So let's cause the exact same issue, but this time in a for loop, which is much harder to actually get to, which is much harder to debug. As usual, I'm gonna create another directory inside this weight group that we use. So next to the simple directory, I'm gonna create something like loop and as usual create a file called main package main func main so let's say we want to run 100 go routines so i'm going to say something like 4 i from 0 uh, i is less than 100 i plus plus and inside of this for loop we're going to run our go routines let's go ahead and create a weight group so let's say var weight group sync dot weight group now let's go ahead and run these 100 go routines so i'm going to say something like uh, go func and i'm actually going to wait inside this go routine as opposed to waiting outside of it so let's say weight group wait weight group dot add let's say free we want to run free go routines inside this go routine and let's say go func and let's say weight group dot done and let's duplicate this three times so it seems like a valid code right it seems like uh, we run a go routine inside this for loop and this go routine calls the add method this go routine calls wait and uh, we call done exactly the same times as we specified in the add and everything seems pretty valid right because we are in a for loop and things happen very fast iteration by iteration this call to wait right here happens much slower than this call to add right here and as you saw in the previous example calling add before the wait returns is actually going to cause that panic so basically what happens here is we're trying to call wait but wait does not return until all three calls to done are made so by the time this wait actually returns uh, the for loop kicks in the next iteration which makes another call to add which makes this wait group reuse panic let's go ahead and run this example and as you can see we have the exact same panic saying wait group is reused before the previous wait has returned and it may seem obvious in this example because it's a simple example but when code is complex when code gets organized and packed packages and functions and all that stuff, it may get very tricky and very hard to track down. This is why keep this in mind when working with weight groups. All right, because this video is getting a little bit too long, let's wrap this up and see each other in part two of this video. Peace.